Hello people this is self turds and we are continuing our series on docker for beginners and in this video we will learn what is docker image so docker image lays the foundation of understanding the docker concepts so i have seen people that when they try to learn docker what they do is like they start creating the container without understanding like from where this container came what is the significance of image with container what are the underlying things in the docker image and if you don't go into the concept then it will create problem like when you try to learn kubernetes so it's better like you understand the concept first and then try to use it so in this video we'll learn the details of docker image from the beginners point of view and then try to create containers and other things in the next videos so let's understand what is docker image docker image can be considered as a blueprint for your application so if you are a software developer so you must have learned about classes and object so what is a class a class is a blueprint and then from that class you create multiple objects same way docker image is a blueprint and from that blueprint what you do you create containers so you can say that docker image is a blueprint for your application so whenever you deploy or use docker what you are doing you are deploying your application you are creating containers for your application which will understand later what is container but basically you want to deploy your application so you encapsulate it with something called as docker and then you deploy it on some server so that other people can use it so this creation of docker containers is done using a blueprint so what that blueprint means let's uh, let's understand that so whenever we say docker image so it comprises of below things so first is the operating system so if you see let's say this is a whole image so the uh, the topmost layer or the outermost layer part is called the operating system so whenever a docker image is created first we need to specify like this docker image is for is having which operating system it can have ubuntu it can have let's say alpine it can have uh, windows it can have mac anything so you need to specify that operating system and that is what the first or the outermost layer of our docker image says that okay this image contains the, this operating system second thing is what os libraries for example the programming language libraries so whenever you create an application so you provide some dependent libraries and you provide some uh, dependent programming languages which basically compiles or interprets your code so all these things are can, can be considered as the os libraries and that is the second layer which this docker image contains so it can be os libraries related to let's say ssl based libraries your curl your wget all these things are os based libraries and this is the second layer the third layer is the app dependencies so let's say you are developing an application of image resizer and you need some image resizing libraries which is present on github so that is called as app dependency so c if you are if your programming language is c so the library will be different if your programming language is node.js then the library will be different so based on the language that you are using you will be using your app dependencies and that forms the third layer of your docker image the fourth layer is the actual source code so you can say the actual business logic that you are writing is the application and that is the innermost layer of your docker image there are more things inside this docker image but from beginners point of view i am explaining only the basic things which needs to be understood if you want to use the docker there are n number of things that are inside the docker image but you can uh, segregate them as these four basic layers the outermost is the operating system the os libraries the app dependencies and the app the, this app is the actual source code that you have written and basically you are trying to execute this application with the help of these app dependencies these app dependencies can depend on the os libraries and finally the whole application need something called as operating system for creating of processes and other interfaces between hardware and then the host operating system so for that you need this outermost operating system layer for your docker image so these are the four main things for which comprises your docker image so docker image has no importance un unless we create containers from it so if we say docker image so it is just uh, a set of data that is sitting somewhere on your hard disk it has no importance it is not a process it is just a data which says that okay this is the operating system this is the os libraries this is the app dependencies and this is the app source code so docker image has no importance unless we create containers from it 
Docker images are stored in Docker registries. So in Docker ecosystem, we have Docker registries, which basically host the Docker images. So I can give you an example here. Let's say you are using Java. So there are uh, jar files which are stored in the Maven repositories. So Docker uh, repositories are something like this. If you're using Node.js, so we have NPM. So there is a similarity between let's say NPM or Maven repositories or Docker registries and the Docker images are images of Docker which are stored in this Docker registries. So one such registry is public hosted one and let's go there. So if I go to Docker Hub, this is the official Docker registry which the Docker people host. So it is hub.docker.com and if you come here, you will find all the images that are present. So let's say I am going to explore. So here you can just say images. Okay. And let's say I want to uh, deploy uh, MySQL using Docker. So if you see, we have the official Docker image of MySQL. So if you go, you will find the details. So this is an image and it has no importance un until and unless you create containers out of it. So there is a MySQL image. There can be a Postgres image. There can be a different REST server image, anything. People create their own image and they upload it on the Docker registry. And this is one official Docker registry that is called as Docker Hub, where anyone can upload their image and anyone can use that image. Okay. So Docker images are stored in the Docker registries. So what we do, we basically download Docker images from Docker registries and push Docker images to the Docker registry. So let's say you want to share some application to the whole world. So what we were doing previously, we were uploading that source code to the GitHub repositories and other people can clone it from there. Same is the concept here. Like you can create your image on your local machine and then that particular docker image can be published or hosted on the docker registry and one of the official docker registries is called as docker hub so you can push your docker image and other people can download it and use it so we'll learn in later videos like how we can push a docker image and how we can download a docker image so every image is identified through a name and tag Every image needs to be unique in the Docker ecosystem, in the Docker registry so that people can uniquely identify it. And we have a naming convention there like, okay, a image is identified using a name and a tag. So why a tag? Because let's say today you are developing an image and you have published your application using X three features and later on you you are adding new feature to it. So what will happen? You will create a new tag for that particular image and you will host it on your operating uh, on the docker registry if no tag is specified then it is the latest tag so when you download an image you always specify the image name and the tag if no tag is specified which means that the latest tag will be used and the latest image will be downloaded so let's say there is a docker image so you can it can have a latest tag or tag one or tag two or tag three so these are the different versions of image of the same Docker image. So one Docker image can have same versions and that are identified using the tags. Let's understand few examples of Docker images. So one example, I have written it here. Let's say you are developing a image resizer application and you want to uh, share it with the public world. And what you did is like it is dependent on the open CV li libraries because for image resizing and other things, we need the open CV library and you are a C++ developer. So you have developed this application in C++ language, this image resizer. And then what you did, you basically use the Ubuntu 22 operating system to publish your Docker image. So other people will copy it and then or download it from the Docker hub and then they can just use the docker run command which we will be learning later and just create the containers and what docker will do it will create a encapsulation around it and using some of the features of uh, communication between the host operating system and the docker platform you can communicate or the docker image or the docker container will communicate with the host operating system so you can deploy this image and create containers either on Windows operating system or on Mac or on Linux operating system. And you don't have to do any changes related to the versions of your C++ compiler 
or let's say some of the dependent libraries so it will learn it will run without any issues you can have another rest server application which is developed in java so it requires the jersey library for creating rest apis on java and it uses the jdk and jvm java development kit and java virtual machine and this is a windows uh, operating system based application so you can download this image you can create container and then you can use it i know that you must have heard the container word many times and you are still not clear that what container is but we'll understand it in the later videos the third image can be a rest server which can be written in node.js and it will require the express dependent library of node.js and then this is developed this is developed on the linux centos application so you can see that we have different applications and they are developed on different libraries different programming languages and on different operating system but they will run on any operating system without any issues because docker provides that feature so you you don't need to understand those in depth things how docker communicates between the host and this particular container you just need to understand that okay i have a application i want to deploy it anywhere and what you did like you are a linux developer so you did the development on linux someone did it on windows someone on mac and they just published their image on the docker registry and other people can use it so i think you have understood the docker images concept really clearly because it will lay the foundation of your understanding the docker concepts so hope you like this video hope you like my channel please subscribe to my channel and please share these videos with other people thank you